So good morning. I am Sheriff Mike Williams, and on behalf of the men and women of the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, we're honored to once again be hosting this ceremony this year. So January is National Human Trafficking Awareness Month, uh, and at the beginning of each year, I'm proud to stand up here, up here, excuse me, alongside our criminal justice and nonprofit uh, partners to reaffirm our commitment to putting an end to this type of crime in our community. Today's new news conference provides us with a platform to discuss the seriousness of human trafficking, an issue that is happening, as we all know, worldwide. And while we may only stand up here once a year, uh, we want the com community to know this, that throughout the year we're working together to bring an end to this type of criminal activity, as well as try to teach and educate everyone in the community how to spot this type of crime and how to report it. So education is key so that you, your family, or your friends do not fall victim to human trafficking. So I want to take a quick moment to recognize and thank our partners for their ongoing support uh, and for joining us here this morning. Uh, I want to thank the mayor for being here with us this morning. Uh, Council members Cesuri and Cumber, who have both been very helpful in, uh, in working uh, on human trafficking issues in our community. I'd like to thank uh, Sheriff Rick Staley for being here with me today. Chief of Police of Atlantic Beach, Michelle Cook, has joined us. And representatives from the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Department of Homeland Security, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, the Drug Enforcement Administration, the U.S. Marshals, the United States Attorney's Office, the Department of Children and Families, the State Attorney's Office, the Office of uh, Probation and Community Intervention, and our nonprofit partners, Her Song, Open Doors Outreach Network, and Rethreaded, uh, and also numerous other local agency partners from the beaches and surrounding areas in Northeast Florida. So we are all part of the Northeast Florida Human Trafficking Coalition, and the work you'll hear about today is the result of our cooperation and our teamwork. So human trafficking involves the use of fraud, force, or coercion to obtain some type of labor or commercial sex act. It's important to note that this act is different than human smuggling and does not require movement across borders or any type of transportation. Traffickers target a wide variety of victims depending on their intentions, and this type of crime, again, is happening everywhere. It's often hidden in plain sight, and there are a number of indicators with the victim's behavior, physical state, social behavior, and oftentimes even work conditions. Some of these key questions that one might ask upon seeing a suspicious, a suspicious situation uh, include, does the person appear disconnected from family, friends, or church? Is the person fearful, timid, or submissive? Does the person have bruises in various stages of healing? Is the person often in the company of someone to whom he or she defers, or is someone who seems to be in control of those situations? If there's a child involved, has he or she stopped attending school? So teaching members of our community to look for these signs uh, is one of the many ways that we're trying to combat this crime from continuing in our community. And I encourage you to think about these questions when you come across something that just doesn't seem right. So we're here 24 hours a day, seven days a week to take calls and investigate these situations. So please don't hesitate to call. And as always, to reach out to us, you can call 630-0500. You can email any tip to uh, JSO Crime Tips at jacksheriff.org. Or as always, to remain anonymous, you can work through our partners at Crime Stoppers, and that is 1-866-845-TIPS. So sadly, according to the National Human Trafficking Hotline in 2018, the state of Florida ranked third in the United States for the highest reported human trafficking rate. So we are committed to lowering those numbers, not only in our community, but in our state and our nation. And we know education is the key. All of us standing up here today realize that the more we train and educate the public, the more people will call their suspicions, which in turn will lead to more lives being saved. So at this time, I'd like to invite Mayor Curry up to say a few words. Mayor. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, good morning. Thanks to Sheriff Mike Williams for opening the drill hall and for being such an important partner in this effort. And thanks to all the members of the Northeast Florida Human Trafficking Coalition. We're all gathered here this morning to raise awareness, increase public knowledge, and better combat human trafficking in Northeast Florida. That's what this month is about. National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month is what is all about. Um, this is an issue that is, uh, must be dealt with. It's important uh, to our city, everybody here. It's also an issue that my wife, Molly, cares deeply about. She serves on the 
rethreaded board. So it's something that uh, in our own home we discuss to know how important this is. Human trafficking is one of the most heinous and egregious crimes that can be committed, stripping individuals of their God-given rights and freedoms. It is my highest duty as mayor to protect the safety and freedoms of all citizens, and that's a commitment I stand behind 100%. But it takes more than government to solve this problem. We all remember the slogan, if you see something, say something. But crimes like these do not always happen in broad daylight. The signs are not always so easy to see. This month, our partners at the Northeast Florida Human Trafficking Coalition are hosting numerous events to raise awareness, educate, and update the community on how law enforcement and community service groups work together to combat human trafficking in our area and how citizens can get involved. I'm committed to a vision for our city that is free of human trafficking. I'm committed to providing hope and support for victims of this crime in our community. And I'm committed to continued collaboration with our coalition partners, community members, to make our shared vision a reality. I want to thank our city council members that are also uh, really diving into these solutions. <clears throat> Great. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> so we're also joined today by Councilwoman Leanna Cumber and Councilman Tommy Hazuri. Both have been committed leaders to our efforts to rid our community of human trafficking activities. Uh, Tommy has been engaged for a couple of years and immediately upon joining the council, uh, Councilwoman Cumber jumped in and began to help right away. So with that, um, I'd like to ask both of them to come to the podium. Um, I want to thank Sheriff Williams and the mayor for being so dedicated to this issue. Unfortunately, sex trafficking can be found throughout our community. The issue cannot be hit, kept in the dark or hidden behind closed doors. To be clear, forcing someone into sexual conduct through means including economic coercion, mental or physical abuse, or drugs, to name a few, is rape. And as U.S. Supreme Court Justice Chief Warren Burger stated, rape is not a mere physical attack. It is a destructive of the human personality. The reality is, is even more pronounced when children are the victims. It is important to note that the average entry age of sex trafficking is 17. Coincidentally, that is the, also the average age of a junior in high school. We must tackle the pervasive violence and, head it, and tackle it head on. I am very encouraged that the federal government, from the Department of Justice to the Department of Transportation, is focused completely on this issue. I am committed to working with the sheriff's office, with the mayor's office, and with our federal and state partners and all stakeholders to eradicate sex trafficking in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity of being here. As uh, the sheriff mentioned, to the sheriff and to law enforcement in North Florida, to the FBI, to the state attorney's office, the mayor, and uh, to Molly, who joined us when we had 30 plus uh, Human Trafficking Coalition members at our office uh, a couple, three weeks ago. Uh, we are totally committed as a city to do what we can. We know we can't do specifically the jail sentences, the crime and the punishment uh, like the federal government or the state attorney's office, but we work hand in hand. Uh, we have passed legislation for signage and strip joints, massage parlors, transportation uh, areas all over Jacksonville. Next will be hotels, next will be restaurants, but it's more than just letting everybody know to call a national hotline. We're also, next year, the state legislature passed a data dashboard that's going to go into effect that we're going to tie in with uh, through our office and uh, through the city. Uh, a link up with them to do much like they do the sexual predators. We're going to have a, a line, a database uh, for all of us to see all over the state uh, who has uh, committed these crimes. They're going to be listed, they're going to be identified, and we're going to move forward. Now, Leanna has a great bill coming forward. We're not going to stop. This is going to be a human trafficking free zone. Much like we've declared a drug free zone, we're not going to stop. This city, human rights has always been a part of mine from human, uh, from the um, HRO, and all the way through now, we want to make sure that uh, we're, the sheriff mentioned that we're the, the state is the third largest uh, human trafficking uh, state in the country. Well, Jacksonville, along with Tampa and Miami, are the third largest. We're the third largest city uh, in human trafficking in the state of Florida. It stops here. I thank you all for being here. Human Trafficking Awareness Day, this is Human Trafficking Awareness Week. 
a month, I mean, is uh, all month of all the month of January. Human Trafficking Awareness Day is next Thursday, this coming Thursday, the 23rd, and I hope all of us take the opportunity to recognize the problem that we have here, and it's going to stop here. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, guys. So again, a, a, a thank you to the mayor's office and to the council for their partnership in this and, and your hard work. We appreciate it. We do. Uh, and with that, I'm going to have our state attorney, Melissa Nelson, come up and say a few words. Thank you, Sheriff. Um, let me begin. This is an important day. This is an important month by just thanking all of you who are here and are the boots on the ground every day and who have done an excellent job at shining a light on this important issue. You've heard that human trafficking is, in fact, alive in our community. Um, and it has uh, myriad effects. The environment of human trafficking, as you all know, is ripe with violence. Most human trafficking victims have been multi-time robbery victims, victims of sexual assaults, and these are crimes that often they do not even report for fear of not being believed. Many traffickers use drugs to control their victims instead of force. They often threaten to withhold drugs unless quotas are met, causing painful withdrawals, or they will use drugs to keep victims awake. Duval County has unfortunately led the state of Florida um, two out of the last three years in opioid overdose deaths, and we know at the state attorney's office of at least six women who have died of opioid deaths since early 2016 that were either human trafficking victims or had some significant connection to ongoing investigations. Historically, human traffickers were males, males, but now we're seeing that it's spreading across gender norms, and this is important. We're starting to see more and more female traffickers. Five female defendants in this area have been charged with human trafficking-related offenses. Human trafficking is something that I personally, as well as the entire state attorney's office, has taken seriously. And in fact, it was at this event in 2017 that I announced the state attorney's office would dedicate additional office resources to focus on these cases. For the first time in the history of the state attorney's office, we dedicated a single prosecutor to handling these cases. Aaron Wolfson is here today with us, um, with investigators Courtney Harrison and Richard True, who are committed to um, this work. In the courtroom last year, six perpetrators were arrested on charges relating to commercial sexual activity. We currently have five pending human trafficking cases against five defendants. Two cases last year were prosecuted in federal court, including Richard Moffitt, which many of you may recall seeing in the news. He was arrested for trafficking three women in Duval County. He was indicted on federal charges. We learned about two additional victims. He was sentenced to 25 years in federal prison. This is a success story. And it actually demonstrates the partnership which Sheriff Williams has um, talked about today, the partnership among our nonprofit partners, our law enforcement partners, our federal partners, um, our partners at the city, as well as our, the state. I just want to um, recognize our team at the state attorney's office, but all of those who are committed to this issue have been a force for change, in my opinion, in the justice system. And that is how the system actually views survivors, completely turning the paradigm on its head. And that's important for us to have success in this area. And other parts of the country have taken note, too, of what's going on in Jacksonville and Duval, Duval County. Our team has provided presentations to law enforcement and trainings across, in fact, the United States. So as I committed two years ago that this was an issue important to the office of the state attorney and important to me. Um, we will remain committed to this work. We've delivered on that promise so far and we will continue to fight every day to rid our community of um, those people who prey on the most vulnerable. Great, thank you. Uh, now I'd like to ask uh, Assistant Special Agent in Charge, Sean Ryan of the FBI to say a few words, Sean. Good morning, and thank you, Sheriff Williams, uh, for inviting us to speak today. <clears throat> and thanks to all of our partners that are, that are here uh, for your efforts to stop human trafficking, not just this month, but throughout the year. 
Human trafficking is modern day slavery and it's happening right here <clears throat> in the heart of the free world in communities just like ours uh, and communi communities of all sizes all across the country. Every day, innocent people are exploited by criminals who control them, often keeping them from basic needs like food, housing, and access to transportation. Right now, every FBI field office across the country is working to stop this heinous crime. We have more than 1,900 investigations open nationwide, 90% of which involve sex trafficking, and the other 10% involve labor trafficking. The number of human trafficking, human trafficking cases reported to the FBI has increased in recent years, and the information that we've collected from those reports has helped us to take steps to more effectively combat the problem. In fiscal year 2018, the FBI initiated 667 human trafficking cases nationwide. To date, we've arrested 479 traffickers in those cases, and we are continuing to pursue others as we speak. But if we're going to be even more effective in the future, then we must continue to work together. Here in Jacksonville and across North Florida, <clears throat> the FBI is committed to full coordination with our law enforcement partners so we can maximize our resources. We also continue to build new community partners who step up and help the survivors of our cases make a new start for themselves. And the FBI is very active and educated the public on what to look for as well. I'd like to address some common myths that we often hear about related to human trafficking. First, many people think this is a problem that only impacts foreign nationals. But the truth is, the overwhelming majority of sex trafficking victims that the FBI recovers here in the United States are actually U.S. citizens. And they are not all women and girls. The FBI estimates that as many as half of tra sex trafficking victims are male, and that number may be even higher because they are far less likely to be identified. Many people think human trafficking only happens in illegal or underground industries. But the FBI has received reports about this activity in restaurants, cleaning services, construction companies, factories, and many other legitimate trades. Another myth is that victims are only targeted by strangers. But traffickers have been known to target their own family members too, their spouses, their children, and even their own parents. And the victims are not always locked away from the world. Most human traffickers control their victims using threats and psychological attacks. Some survivors has, have told us they didn't escape because they were too scared for their safety of their loved ones. Others were so manipulated that they didn't recognize at the time that they were being controlled by someone else. Thankfully, there are many programs in the community to assist these survivors. In addition, victim specialists from the FBI and other law enforcement agencies, like those that you see here today, play a vital role. They help survivors understand their rights which is critical to helping law enforcement secure successful prosecutions, and they help survivors take steps to avoid a cycle of abuse in the future. The FBI Jacksonville Division is proud to work with the agencies that you see here and countless others across the state and country in the, in the fight against human trafficking, and we encour encourage you all to join as well. When you see something that doesn't feel right, share it with law enforcement. You might save a life, but you will certainly be a part of the effort to make this a safer community, and that will help make this a better country for everyone. Thank you. Sheriff Williams. So great. Thank you, Sean. <clears throat> Sean mentioned, I want to say a, just a quick thank you to the nonprofit community that works in this area as well. So we talk, as you can see, um, a heavy law enforcement presence up here, and we talk about working these cases and bringing uh, justice and, and, you know, arresting the offenders. But remember, there's a life that has to be rebuilt uh, after this as well. So, uh, and really, we couldn't do that without our nonprofit partners. So we thank you for the work that you do uh, in our community and, and really nationwide. So as we conclude the news conference today, I want to highlight some facts from cases uh, that we have all worked with uh, together on this year. Uh, all of our law enforcement partners, and, and I, uh, within JSO, our Integrity Special Investigations Unit that focuses on this issue for us. So 19 victims in 2019. 19 victims were identified and or rescued. Uh, of those, four were juveniles. 
There were 34 human trafficking related arrests and three federal indictments again in 2019. So these ca cases highlight what can be accomplished with effective investigations and prosecution. But as with all crime, the emphasis and the need for our community is to call us with their tips and their suspicions. That really is the key. So remember uh, once again that we are here to help. If you or you think someone is a victim of human trafficking, please reach out to us at 630-0500. You can email us at tip at jsocrimetips at jacksheriff.org. Or again, to remain completely anonymous, use our partners at First Coast Crime Stoppers and call 1-866-845-TIPS. So in closing, I want to mention that this coming Thursday night, the Northeast Florida Human Trafficking Coalition will host their seventh annual gathering uh, for community members who are interested in learning more about human trafficking and how they can help. So it'll take place January 23rd. Uh, the formal program will start at 6 p.m. at South Point Community Church. Uh, that's located on Salisbury Road. And so on behalf of the coalition, you're invited to join us and participate in this very important effort to protect our community. So again, I want to thank everybody for coming out. Thank the media for coming to cover the event. Uh, and as we close, uh, just remember, education is key. Please share what you've heard today with the community, and, uh, and we'll put an end to human trafficking in our community. Thank you.